What's up guys, I'm here with another video. Welcome to episode 42 of Let's Build a City. Today we're building a bank. So, yeah. Alright, let's make our bank. Make a bank, sorry. Lots of YouTube. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a bank for all of your city building needs. Through this tutorial, I will be showing you how to make absolutely everything inside and outside of the bank, like the customer area, the back office, and also the vault area. If you enjoy this tutorial and you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing as I make brand new city builds every single week. If you do subscribe, please do click the little bell, and that will ensure that you can all sub sent directly to your sub box. Without any further ado, let's get started. So just before we start building, my friends, here are all of the materials. Right, let's grab the materials. So we need chisel course block, pillar course block. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. You can actually join that block all the way down to the ground. However, we're going to want to take this fifteen block right here to extend it across the build by 14. 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And you can join that block down to the ground as well. You also want to take this 14th block and you want to extend it forwards and line it up with the first original row of five quarts. You can see it over there. You're going to want to join this down to the ground as well. And as a matter of fact, you can of course join it across to the other side as well. So this is the foundation of our bank. We're going to fill the walls in a little bit, beginning with the front because it's the most complex. Start off by extending the bottom pair of walls together. Right. The 
inside of the bank is raised up a row, so we have to start building one row up the ground. Starting from the left here, going right on top of the row of block of quartz, I want you to place two chisel quartz, and then a block of quartz. Two, that's a, one or two. And then a pillar quartz block, and you can even extend that up by two, one and two. Extend the second block to the right using a glass block. And then place a row of pillar quartz blocks, one row away to create an entrance space. We now want to copy what we have on that side onto this, meaning we want to place two rows of glass, block of quartz, two rows of chiseled quartz block. Now what you can do is extend the block of quartz upwards to join the array. You can place glass on top of all of the other glass so that we have quite large windows and then you can also place glass on top of the chisel quartz block as well lined up with this quite nice looking front of the bank so now that you've done that we have to do the other exterior walls and they're not too hard to do to be honest with you so on the left and right side of the building we're going to begin We'll begin by connecting the entire bottom of the bank together using block of quartz. As I mentioned, the area is raised one row anyway, so you can just extend a row of quartz all the way around. On the left and right side, you want to have this pattern, and it is a pattern, it's a simple one. Two rows of chiseled quartz, block of quartz. Two rows of chiseled, block of quartz. Two chiseled, block of quartz. Two chiseled, block of quartz. Two chisels. You'll be able to repeat that pattern all the way across the sides of the bank. Now, the back of the bank isn't so complicated. The back of the bank is actually just going to be... I think we'll just make it entirely chiseled, just so that it stands out a little bit from the rest. So, that's what the sides look like. It just looks a little bit fancier than, you know, just your run-of-the-mill average wall. The entire back wall can just be chiseled, which you can even, if you want, can add windows and stuff to this back side, but that will be a decision that you choose later on, once we start working on the inside of the bank. You'll be able to see it's not the biggest bank in the world, so you really aren't that encouraged to place loads and loads of windows and stuff, because we're actually going to be placing quite a lot of things on the inside of the bank, the interior is quite full, so it is a decision that you will make, but do remember the sides of the banks, uh, the bank looks identical, so once you've done that, we can move on. So the front of the bank is actually a little bit more interesting than it looks right now. We do have a couple of things to do. We can probably skip out on the glass, and we can grab the smooth stone, the smooth stone slabs instead. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend three rows of smooth stone, one, two, three, in front of our bank. So this is going to work as a platform that we're going to step up onto and walk into our bank. So three rows of smooth stone, like this. We then want to, in front of the left side of the smooth stone, and the right, we want to place a row of one, two, three, four, pillar quartz block coming up from the ground. One, two, three, four. We then want to place three rows, one, two, three, coming in from both sides, one, two, three, at the bottom of the pillars. We then want to have two more pillars, which will be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, coming up from the ground like this. You can then place a row of smooth stone between them, and then place a row of smooth stone slabs on the ground in front, like this. And I want you to join the tops of all of these together, by the way, using some 
quartz slabs. So the very tops, you want to connect them together and also back to the bank as well, just like this. So what we're now going to do is we're going to fill the top of this in using grey concrete. And the grey concrete is going to just line. It's quite satisfying actually. It's just going to sit directly above all of that space. And we're going to do something quite cool with it. Start off by placing a trim. That's how I describe it. A trim of quartz slab all the way around the top of the grey concrete. It's a very modern technique to do this. Like so. That's looking pretty good. But then on the left and on the right side, I want you to place an additional quartz slab. So, but then on the left and on the right side, I want you to place an additional quartz slab. So it sticks out a little bit like so. We then want to inwards and upwards place quartz stairs on the left and right side, extending inwards like this. And then what we want to do is on both sides, we want to do this. And we actually want to do this in total four times. You want to place a quartz slab going right and up. That's once, right. Up, that's twice, right, up, that's thrice, right, up, that's four times. It'll actually line up perfectly with the pillar down below. And you want to do the same on the opposite side. So, left, up, once, left, up, twice, left, up, three times, left, up, four times. And we're going to join it together, left to right, using a little bit of slab edge, like that. That's fantastic. What we then want to do is we want to fill the middle of this in using some chiseled quartz because it looks quite cool. I really like the effect of it. The downside is that there's no way to cover it up at the top here, but that's fine. It can actually run front to back, so it's quite a cool effect. Now, you're thinking to yourself, yeah, so to you, that looks weird and strange. We're going to make it better. Let me show you. So, we're now going to grab the block of quartz and we're going to place a big dollar sign because the pound sign is too difficult to make. The dollar sign is made out of block of gold and it actually starts right about, it, it can start right here. It lines up with the entrance, this bottom middle quartz slab. Place a block of gold in front of it. One on top, extend left, right, take the right block, extend up two, left two, up two, right two, take that middle block, extend it upwards, and there you have, well, if that doesn't let you know what this place is for, I don't know what will. So, in regards to the outside of the bank, we have two more things left to do. They're actually dead, dead easy. We have to take the entire roof, okay, and we have to extend it all back. The roof is going to extend back, and it's going to, we'll have it overhang the back by one row. And that, yeah, we'll just have it overhang the back by one row because it'll look a little bit weird if uh, if we don't. So extend the entire roof back all the way back like this, the the entire roof just like that. You're also going to want to fill the middle. Extend all of the outer quartz.
upwards of stairs, of slabs, and well, you can even also use the quartz blocks as well in certain positions, like these blocks and these blocks at the top, and then just fill in underneath the area at the back using your chiseled quartz. So once you've completed that, ladies and gentlemen, there isn't that much left to do. Fill in underneath the area at the back using your chiseled quartz. So once you've completed that, ladies and gentlemen, there isn't that much left to do on the outside of the bank. The only thing that I'd recommend is adding a border of leaves all the way around the bank because it actually just ties things together quite nicely. And it adds a little bit of colour as well. It does the same sort of thing that the block of gold does for the bank in which it turns kind of like the pale, white, lifelessness of the bank. It just kind of really shines and stands out. The green and the gold really go together very nicely with the rest of the outside of the bank. So now that we have accomplished that, ladies and gentlemen, we've made the exterior of the bank, it's time for us to work on the inside. So let's do exactly that. For the inside of the bank, we're going to start off by using all of the materials that we already have on us. Once we've actually added a bit of structure inside this plate, exactly that rest of the ensemble of the bank. So now that we have accomplished that, ladies and gentlemen, we've made the exterior of the bank, it's time for us to work on the inside. So let's do exactly that. For the inside of the bank, we're going to start off by using all of the materials that we already have on us. But once we've actually added a bit of structure inside this place, then we are going to swap over. So first, I actually want to add a ceiling to the bank, okay? So the ceiling is actually quite easy to place. We're going to use a block of iron, and we're going to take the row of quartz right at the foot of the build, and we're going to extend it all backwards using a block of iron like this. So you're going to have about three rows or so work with inside of the bank, and I think that you really need to And then we're going to have iron. It just feels like... ceiling like this. So if you leave a gap of two between all of these sea lanterns of the strip of the middle, then I don't think we'll have to replace those, but that will serve as temporary lighting for now. I want to mark out on the left side of the bank where a wall is going to be. So if you're on the left side of the bank and you find this chiseled quartz, I want you to move backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right here, we're going to place two ones. I want you to move backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right here, we're going to place two upside down quartz stairs coming to the right, like this. Gray concrete, two upside down quartz stairs, gray concrete. There's actually going to be a door here, so I want you to skip a block and then place a gray concrete. And I want you to extend the grey concrete all the way backwards to hit that wall, like this. So we're just dividing the bank up a bit. Additionally, I want you to take this last grey concrete in the sequence, and I want you to move one block backwards, place a grey concrete to the right, and I want you to extend all of the grey concretes that we have just placed, every single one of them, and I want you to extend them all up like that so also between here as well that's going to be great and here is actually where a vault door is going to be it's actually just cosmetic right 
it's what what we basically want to do, right? Is we want to have a row of grey concrete on this wall, parallel to this wall, and we want to have an area filled in in the middle. It's going to be primarily, and we want to have an area filled in in the middle. It's going to be primarily. But in the corners, you're going to want to have upside down and at the top's regular facing wall stairs. And it's going to look kind of like one of those like vault doors that you like have to spin the thing to open it. Which means we also want to place a light grey concrete right in the middle. And we want to grab end rods and buttons. And we're actually going to make the door. We're going to stick a button in the middle. And we're going to stick end rods on all of the sides. And it look in the middle. And we want to grab end rods and buttons. And we're actually going to make the door. We're going to stick a button in the middle. And we're going to stick end rods on all of the sides. And it looks like one of those old-fashioned bank vaults that you wave. Like you grab the thing and it makes that noise. It's like... <laughs> and like the door like swings open. I just think it's a cool design feature to have in here. And we're going to add a backing. And I'm going to create a door. By the way, the door for the vault is going to be inside an office area, and it's going to be about here. But I'm just going to make a backing of light grey concrete so that you can't see past those quartz stairs. And I know that it looks really, really weird now, right? Like this is a weird way to do the interior, but there is a reason that we've done it this way: is so that we can place the floor in properly because everywhere has a different floor. So, for instance, when it comes to the vault room here inside, I want to use iron blocks. I want to use block of iron for the vault floor because it feels like a strong, safe material. I want to have, as I said, block of iron for the vault room, just as the floor. When it comes to this office area, I mean, it can pretty much entirely be red concrete. So the entire office area can just be red concrete, like this. This is you're going to have cashiers, this is where you're going to have more specialty people. Unfortunately, I've had to deal with banks quite a lot, so I know the layout of these things a little bit. Um, there's like a, a back office area. So for the front of the bank, we're actually going to use a couple of different materials. I'm just going to dump the block of iron, because I don't think we'll be using it again. I'm just going to grab some white concrete here, and I want to use white concrete, and I want to extend it just underneath the left of the vault door, this area here where we have the great concrete, I want to extend a row of one, two, three, four white concrete, and all the way left, and then forwards, and I just want to place a little bit of white concrete underneath all of the window area here, white concrete, and all the way left, and then forwards, and I just want to place a little bit of white concrete underneath all of the window area here. I'm going to fill this in with red concrete. So this kind of shows you that you can walk up to this area. I might even make it so that the red concrete extends to the wall. That might look a little bit better, actually. I think that looks a little bit better. So this is the area, like, you know that you can walk up. I mean, you, you could even have the red concrete, like, protrude on this right side as well. So it's, like, a little bit more open and inviting instead of having a sectioned off white concrete. But that kind of shows you where you've got to go once you're inside the bank to find the business. You could even crack open a couple of blocks on this side as well, so that you're being a little bit more directed. And I also want to place a little bit of white concrete just up at the front here. Just like a row of white concrete up at the front. And also just to add a border on the right side underneath the vault. And I'm just going to fill in underneath the vault some white concrete as well so it's almost as if like there's a little bit of a frame a little bit of a border to on the right side underneath the vault and i'm just going to fill in underneath the vault door i think some white concrete as well so it's almost as if like there's a little bit of a frame a little bit of a border to the actual front of the bank we use a couple of and in this case a few rows of oak planks as well to just kind of show all of the rest of the area off as well a little bit so you can kind of see like this is how you get to the vault this is kind of like a, a walk around area and this is like where we 
business happens. So all of this is actually like quite set out in detail. That's why I wanted to uh, do all the pause and stuff. So now that we've got a little bit more structure up front here, we do have a couple of things to add to the front of the bank as well. We can use the materials that we already have to do it. So the materials that we already have on us that we can utilize in great concrete, light gray concrete, black concrete, quartz stairs, buttons, end rods, and red concrete. Hold on. Seating area here. So that's just going to be a port stairs in this corner and then a red concrete next to it. So it's just a little seat. On this opposite wall, all the way over here to the right, I want an ATM, a cash machine, if you will. And the ATM, it's going to be made using a row of light grey concrete from floor to roof, leaving a gap of one. And then we're going to have a grey concrete, black concrete, quartz stairs on top, and then a row of light grey concrete just to the left here, like that. And we will need some other things to complete it, but if you place a button in front of the grey concrete, you have gotten most of the way. So I want you to come into this back office area here. I want you to place a light grey concrete between each of the right upside down quartz stairs at the teller area, like this. I want you to place sideways facing quartz stairs. Now this is going to be a bit tricky for this block in particular. I, I don't know how you, Oh, I did it! It wants to face this way and this way. And those are just two computers that the people here, like the people that we sat here, helping you on this other side, will be able to utilize. So I want to have a couple of desks as well. Literally just a couple of them actually. There's only going to be about two of them. So the desks, I'm going to start from this back corner and I'm going to go one, two, the desks are going to start where this is. And we're actually going to need the quartz slabs as well. We're going to place one, two quartz slabs coming out from the wall. And then we're just going to flare it down using a quartz slab as well. So that's what these desks are going to look like. If you want them to be fancier, you can include a little bit of quartz coming out from the wall. And then we're just going to flare it down using a quartz slab as well. So that's what the desks are going to look like. If you want them to be fancier, you can include a little bit of quartz stairs like this. Uh, I want one on this opposite wall too. So this is going to be like a quartz slab and then upside down quartz stairs, just like coming off this wall. And I want to have a couple of seats so you can stick a quartz, uh, a quartz stair just somewhere behind the desks. You can stick a quartz there on the opposite side of the desk like this, so that there's a quartz, uh, a quartz there, just somewhere behind the desks. You can stick a quartz there on the opposite side of the desk like this, so that they're not like on the same side like that. And then you've got like seating facing each other. When it comes to the vault, pretty much in here, I'm just going to have like a row of concrete here on the left and the right with light grey concrete in between and we're just going to have loads of shulker boxes that are marked out but what you could also do is like you could include like a like a table in here so the table could just be like made out of quartz uh like quartz like this quartz slabs and uh it could just have like a seat in here as well so that you can kind of like just sit and admire whatever you've got in your vault so that is pretty much all we can 
and uh, it could just have like uh, a seat in here as well, so that you can kind of like just sit and admire whatever you've got in your vault. So that is pretty much all we can do with the materials that we have on us right now, ladies and gentlemen. We just have to pick up some more weird, uh, more decorative materials now, but we didn't really have room for to to start with. So what we will now need to craft is all of these materials that you can now. See. Pistons, which have to be powered. 
forward, or we block the redstone underneath them, and that's how the stores look. So, somewhat you would, as you can imagine, be perched on here, and this is going to be a computer screen, and uh, that's, that's how you're going to, you're going to talk to people. We have and inside stairs, and these are computers. The computers are going to be placed backwards like this. It's gonna, you're gonna have the and inside stairs facing like this way towards where the customer would sit, and the computer screen is going to be facing where the uh, the actual bank person would sit here. Now, I'm also going to chuck a birch door here to lead into the vault room because we're going to trust our employees. And we can probably chuck away some of these materials because we do have to use some repeats. So for the office area, we're going to need some more white glazed terracotta, some leaves. Haven't really got room for plant parts. Um, we're going to need item frames and some glass. And we can use paintings and lanterns as well. So the computer screens, all of them just need an item frame. We're going to need item frames and some glass. And we can use paintings and lanterns as well. So the computer screens, all of them, just need an item frame and a glass painting. That's pretty much all. Got to do. If you want to get fancy with it, if you want it to look as though people are like using maps and stuff, you can use apples. I don't know where apples are, hang on. Perfect. So if you find apples, I mean you can use apples and then it will look as though the people are like, it, it kind of looks as though the people are like have maps pretty much. So, you know, it, it's up to you. It's, you know, it's a design choice. It's a bit more colorful. But otherwise you can just use like a regular screen. So like a nice the frame and like just a glass paint. So in the back of the office here, I'm going to place like white glazed terracotta and oak leaves on top like this. And I, I did plan on just putting a couple of paintings here as well. So I only want little one block high paintings. And uh, I don't really mind what they are, but I do have a favorite. It's kind of like a white and black painting. It kind of just goes with the room a little bit. I'll know it when I see it, if it ever appears. No, no. No, 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 yes. And I think I might have a couple of them actually. An alternate idea is to have windows, by the way. You're more than welcome to add windows. It'll actually have quite a bit of natural light in here as well. So whether or not you want to have something like that, or whether you want to have paintings, or whether you want to have like windows on the sides, it, it, it's all up to you. You could easily just kind of like have a have like a couple of paintings like on the sides and you don't necessarily have to uh, have stuff where I put it. it. It does make this place quite a bit brighter in here to be honest with you. So that is actually quite nice and maybe we'll have like a double painting. Oh, that's, that is way too big. Maybe we'll have like a double painting here. That's not going to stop it is it perfect. So maybe like another painting here on this side like that and maybe we'll have like a double painting. Oh. That's, that is way too big. Maybe we'll have like quite a bit brighter in here, to be honest with you. So that is actually quite nice. And maybe we'll have like a double pa oh. That's that is way too big. Maybe we'll have like a double painting here. That's not gonna stop it, is it perfect? So maybe like another painting here on this side, like that. Just to keep things like a little bit nice and bright as well. So the lanterns, I mean, you can just stick them places. I, I don't actually know where that we could quite put one. It'd probably be better for us to use sea lanterns inside of this up. This area like this. So sea lanterns in kind of like, uh, I'd probably have them in a more calculated position than this, but you can kind of like figure out for yourself like where you want your ceiling lightings to be and all of that stuff. So now let's come inside of the vault room. So for the vault room, I figure you don't need too much. Item frames, diamonds, light gray shulk box, gray shulk box, and maybe a sea lantern.
going to put a mix of light grey shulker box and grey shulker box in this wall because they're accessible. They uh, they look like little um, like storage boxes. And if we place some item frames on them, hang on. No, hang, wait. There we go. If we place some item frames on them, and if you put like diamonds inside the item frames, or maybe even some gold ingots or emeralds and stuff as well, you can mix it up. And then if we chuck like a sea lantern on this table. Oh. <laughs> and if you jump like a sea lantern on this table, it'll actually keep the ball quite nice and bright. So this is where like the entire stock of the, like this is where all the diamonds are. If you're going to rob the bank, you're going to want to come to this room. Let's just put it that way. And then when it comes down to it, ladies and gentlemen, we are really down to just like individual little details. I mean, this area is like quite nice and bright enough for me already. It's got quite a lot of paintings. It's got quite a lot of light. You might want to say just add like a hanging, uh, a hanging lantern maybe like here in this position, just in the sort of like the entrance area. You're more than welcome to add like a, a painting to like here. Not the world's biggest painting, please. Hang on, well, let's lift this block here and then maybe we'll have, you know, <laughs> why? So maybe some, mm -hmm. yeah, that's fine. Maybe just like have a painting here, something like that, just to kind of, kind of like keep things a little bit bright. But I mean, pretty much everything is is sorted out in here. I mean, the the entire bank is like fully operational. Everything works. The only thing that we're missing is a front door. Um, the front door requires uh, an iron door, and it's going to go right here. And something that we don't have on us, but will absolutely have been in the item list, is just a weighted pressure plate. So here, quick. Easy door. Bum, bum, bum. Oh. <clears throat> Thank you. And on this opposite side, so you can walk in and out of the bank just like that. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, your entire bank has just been completed. We've, we've done the entire thing. Very well done. <laughs> now, this is what your bank will look like once it's been 100% fully completed, ladies and gentlemen. We have made a bank. Thank you guys for so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video from me. And yeah. And we'll see and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.